understand how momentum in ADS 2011 series of versions uh, can be used by designers and this tutorial video is good for either existing users of ADS or somebody who is trying to learn ADS 2011 and how can he perform electromagnetic simulation in this. In order to illustrate the momentum simulation process, I have the sample layout uh, in which I have connected two pins, uh, one at the input, another is the output. Now this is supposed to be um, a couple line structure which once uh, simulated should produce some kind of band pass filter response. However, uh, the response may or may not be optimized because this is just a sample simulation here. In order to begin with momentum simulation in uh, 2011, um, users can see there's a nice EM toolbar uh, which is available here and which allows all to, uh, which allows users to do all the common operations uh, which they require in order to run an EM simulation. Another change to notice is there are no longer two different menus for momentum and FEM and they have been replaced by a single menu called EM. And this EM menu allows to change um, and set different parameters for performing an EM simulation. The simplest way to start with momentum in new ADS 2011 versions is to click on this icon called EM Setup. Once we click on this icon, all the previous efforts in uh, required as in earlier ADS versions can be done from this very simple single window, which makes it really convenient uh, from user's perspective to set up and run an EM simulation. Another nice thing about this window here is users can see few exclamation marks and these exclamation marks simply means that there is something which is missing in order to run a proper EM simulation. If we put our mouse over these exclamation marks and we can get the appropriate message. For example, here it is saying that your substrate is not firm, which obviously because we haven't defined any particular substrate. Another message which comes up and saying there is no layout pins or layers which are mapped to substrate because you don't have any substrate to stack up information found. So this is, makes it really easy to find out where could be the problems and why we are not able to run the simulations on our design as we need. Now in order to begin the EM simulation, the first thing we can do obviously is to select what type of simulator would we like to use in running the simulation? So choice obviously are Momentum RF and Momentum Microwave. So users can prefer Momentum Microwave for higher accuracy, higher frequency simulation. However, within the limit of Momentum RF, uh, this will yield a very, very fast simulation results. If a full 3D simulation has to be provided, ADS offers the FEM simulator tightly integrated into the environment and users can run FEM for certain structures which may have on wires or package or some 3D transition which requires a full 3D electromagnetic simulation. So for the layout, um, we already have a layout cell 1 selected and which can be also seen on the top. We are working with cell 1 here. So that's currently set. So now let's go ahead and define the substrate so we can go to substrate. And as we can see, there is no substrate currently in our workspace. So we can click on new button and go ahead and define a substrate. And now let's give it a name. Um, let's say alumina um, one. So that we can identify the substrate by uh, certain um, you know, parameters. And then we also have some templates of the substrate and we can select the closest match to our application. So people in MMIC can prefer to use gallium arsenide or people in MIC kind of structure can go ahead and use alumina. There are strip line and then we have silicon substrate for people working on RFICs. People working on PCB, uh, multi-layer PCB can start with the template of a two-layer FR4 substrate. Now this makes it really very really convenient to have a good starting point. So for our design, we have a simple MIC kind of structure. So let's pick 25 mil alumina to start with and we can modify it. 
So once we click OK, a new substrate editor opens up, which replaces the old way of defining the substrates. And here, the things are really, really very easy, no matter how many layers of substrate or how many via holes and conductors are mapped in. So once we are in the stack up, we can select the Illumina and it shows a default stack up by a material name Illumina 1 and the thickness of this material currently is defined as 25 mil. And this is the thickness which we also need, so we don't need to change it. In case it's needed, you can go ahead and edit the thickness. On the conductor metal, if you click on conductor, uh, currently it shows that the layer con in layout is defined as a perfect conductor material. And right now, we also have two other material in our database we can select. However, I will show you how to add these materials in our list in case um, you don't have any material which might come up here. So we can select the right amount of material here. So for our case, let's select copper, define it as a sheet conductor, or you can simulate it at a particular you know, uh, conductor thickness, uh, considering it's a thick conductor. We, while a conductor is supposed to be sheet, we still need to define thickness of the conductor so that right amount of skin uh, effects and skin loss can be calculated. So in our case, I am defining one ounce of copper, which is equal to 35 micron of conductor thickness. If one has to define a new material uh, for dielectric, a new material for conductor, in case nothing is available in the list, we can go ahead to technology material definition, and this will open up a dialog box whereby we can add our own conductor or we can add it from the database. So some of the popular conductors are provided here in the list, or we can similarly go ahead and define our own dielectric and manually enter the property, or we can go ahead and add it from the database provided along with ADS 2011 series of softwares. Okay, for this case, we already have the dielectric, we already have the conductor. Now let's go ahead and set this up for simulation. Another interesting thing, uh, which one of the other videos will show you, uh, titled Working with Layouts and Substrates in ADS 2011, uh, will, will showcase how to create multi-layer substrates and map the VRs and so on. So right now, let, let me just show how to map a VR uh, into, into the substrate, just in case we have some grounding VRs on, on, the, on the conductor structure in our layout. To map a VIA or a conductor in ADS 2011 substrate editor is really easy. For example, if you want to add a conductor on this substrate or this layer here, we can just select that interface and we can just right click and select whether we want to map a conductor layer or map a semiconductor layer or we want to map a dielectric layer there. So in this case, we would like to add a conductor so we can just click on here. So it maps another conductor. So con was already there. We map another conductor, who, which by default is set as layer con2, but we can go ahead and select any other layer uh, from the list which is available here. The second conductor, uh, connectivity uh, or the material can also be defined by picking the right material uh, from the list. And for example, we can have a gold conductor sitting right there as a copper conductor. Similarly, if you need to uh, map a via between uh, these two conductors to ground plane at the bottom, so as can be seen if I click here, is defined as cover, which essentially means is a ground plane. And if you want to have a finite ground, uh, we can select the strip plane and we can map a ground conductor there, or we can map a slot plane and then it becomes an infinite uh, ground plane. And we can still need to map a slot layer in which we would like to have this, this crown layer here. For our present case, we will just use it as a cover so that I have a perfect ground at the bottom of my dielectric. Now in order to map a via, we can select this dielectric, uh, right click uh, on our mouse and select map a conductor via. If we are performing FEM uh, simulation, we also have a choice of using semiconductor or a dielectric via. Certain cases, we may have a Teflon bush uh, going through the dielectric and we may want to capture the effect of the same. So for those purposes, we can use a map a dielectric via. 
So in this case, we will just use map conductor via and the VI gets mapped. And once the VI is selected, we can choose the layer in which the VI is being drawn in our layout. So this is really very really easy as, as can be seen uh, here to map any conductor or hole. Uh, so for this uh, present case, we don't need this VI. So we can right click and select unmap. And similarly, CON2 is not needed. So we can select CON2 and we can click on unmap. So if you need more detailed demonstration, please uh, refer to the other video, which, which showcases how to work with different uh, substrates and so on. So let's save our substrate uh, with the name Illumina 1. And we can come back here. So another thing we can notice now, the exclamation marks have gone because we have a proper substrate as can be seen here. We can go ahead and look at the ports. So all the pins by default get converted into 50 ohm ports here. But in case it's needed, we can go ahead and remove uh, those ports where we don't wish to perform the simulation on. So in terms of frequency plan, let's set an adaptive frequency plan. And let's start from 1 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz with 101 number of points uh, using an adaptive suite. We can go ahead into output plan and select any particular template. Uh, we can provide the data set name and we can go ahead and select the options and define the mesh properties in case it's needed to be modified. So by default, uh, the edge mesh will be on in new ADS, uh, sorry, off in new ADS versions. And if you are using a thick conductor, a good approach is to let it be off. In case the sheet conductors are used, it's recommended that we switch on the edge mesh and let it be on the setting of auto determine edge width. This will produce little more accurate results on high frequencies as the finer meshes will be created along the edges. So we are ready to launch simulation and for launching simulation, we can click on the simulate icon here and this will allow uh, momentum uh, to run in, in, in the status window as can be seen here. So while we are waiting for this results, I will, um, we will pause here and we will come back to this video once the simulation has been finished. Now the simulation is finished and this data display template uh, comes out and this is a new way of looking data. And currently the data which is displayed is magnitude in phase of S11. And we can select the different measurements by moving this slider bar. For example, we can click on this marker and we can use our right and left arrow key to switch. So this gets, uh, the graph gets updated to S21 and also the text get updated to S21. So similarly, we can select another marker and we can move it to change the index of row and column in order to see other kind of graphs which may be applicable. So hopefully this gives and getting started information on how to set up and run momentum simulation in ADS 2011. For more detailed videos, uh, kindly refer to some of the other topics in this list. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.